Well, hello and welcome back to our journey through the book of Leviticus. Today is Leviticus chapter 22. It's been such an honor to be your tour guide through one of the least read books of the Bible and just finding principles that can still apply to our lives. Now, are we held to these? You know, we've been reading in the past where, you know, because of the Israelites living in a certain culture, they weren't supposed to shave certain parts of their beard or wear certain kinds of clothing. Or clothing. Are we held to those practicals? No, no. We, we live, you know, in the, as some would call the dispensation of grace. I don't know if I like that wording as much, but the point is the same. However, the principle still remains. And that's one of the things I love about reading through the book of Leviticus is this is sound wisdom for our life. And even though some of the absolute practicals will be different, the principles remain the same. And today is one of those that I'm interested to hear when we get to the end of this, what your number one takeaway is. As a pastor, when I look at these different priestly regulations, I really apply those principles into my life uh, very particularly because I have the vocation of standing as a shepherd for the people. But even in our own lives, everyone is in ministry. You know, if you do anything on behalf of God to serve someone else, that is a form of ministry. And so they can still stand for you as well. Now, when it comes to the idea of the different stipends you know, that the priest would get, if you notice, we've been reading, the Bible would say that if someone brought a grain offering to the Lord, let's say they brought you know, a whole bunch of grain, well, a certain amount of it would be sent as an offering put on the altar. The rest of it was able to be used by the priest. And the reason for that is, is the priest didn't have an allotment of land or allotment of different things like all the other tribes did. The Levites, who was where the priesthood came from, their allotment was to take care of the things of God, which was a high honor. But then at the same time, then it fell on the other tribes to support them so that they could do the work of ministry. And that's how it works in local churches today, is when you give your tithe and you give your offering to the Lord, you give it as an act of worship. But then what that does is it takes care of the house of God, and that includes the people of God who serve in the house of God. And that's how it is supposed to work. That's one of the reasons why you need to be plugged into a local church family so that you can worship the Lord through giving back to Him, but then you can also support the ministries of the Lord as well. And it all works together. God has it all figured out <laughs> if we would just submit to His authority. And so the great thing I love about this chapter is God has given us everything. Be sure to give Him what is back to Him. That would be my overall principle. And I'm curious from, your, from you as well what you would think it is. So we're going to read this together. Verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 1 through verse 16 is going to be about regulations for eating the priestly stipends. And then verse 17 through 32 is going to be about worthy and unworthy offerings. So I want to read this together with us. If you have your Bible, you want to make sure it's open with me. You want to pause it, open up to chapter 22, because it's always good to read in case I miss a word here and there. But we're going to read this together, maybe stop along the way, or maybe just read the whole thing. We're just going to have an adventure today. Here we go. Verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to be very careful with the sacred gifts that the Israelites set apart for me, so they do not bring shame on my holy name. I am the Lord. Give them the following instructions. In the future, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean when he approaches the sacred offerings that the Lord or the people of Israel consecrate to the Lord, he must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If any of Aaron's descendants has a skin disease or any kind of discharge that makes him ceremonially unclean, he may not eat from the sacred offerings until he has been pronounced clean. He also becomes unclean by touching a corpse or by having an emission of semen or touching a small animal that is unclean, or by touching someone who is ceremonially unclean for any reason. The man who is defiled in any of these ways will remain unclean until evening. He may not eat from the sacred offerings until he has bathed himself in water. When the sun goes down, he will be ceremonially clean again, and he may eat from the sacred offerings, for this is his food. But he may not eat an animal that has died a natural death or has been torn apart by wild animals, for this would defile him, I Am the Lord. The priests must follow my instructions carefully, otherwise they will be punished for their sin and will die for violating my instructions. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offerings. Even guests and hired workers in a priest's home are not allowed to eat them. However, if the priest buys a slave for himself, the slave may eat of the sacred offerings. And if his slaves have children, they also may share his food. If a priest's daughter marries someone outside the priestly family, 
she may no longer eat the sacred offerings. But if she becomes a widow or is divorced and has no children to support her, she returns to live and returns to live in her father's home as in her youth, she may eat her father's food again. Otherwise, no one outside the priest's family may eat of the sacred offerings. Any such person who eats the sacred offerings without realizing it must pay the priest for the amount eaten, plus an additional 20%. The priest must not let the Israelites defile the sacred offerings brought to the Lord by allowing unauthorized people to eat them. This would bring guilt upon them and require them to pay compensation. I am the Lord who makes you holy. Pause. Now, there's a lot of really good practical reasons why God would say, hey, look, you're my priest, so set yourself apart. And I've, I think that that's still true today, and maybe I'm overdoing it. I love to hear in your comments if you think I am, but already God said, hey, Israelites in general, I want you to set yourself apart from the other nations of the world because you're mine. But then he looks at the priest and say, hey, you who are representing me before the people, and then you're representing the people before me, you take another step toward getting any sin out of your life and toward setting yourself apart because you have a, a calling with higher responsibility. You're not any better than anybody else, but because of the position you're in, you're representing everybody. <laughs> so you need to take that extra step. But then on the other side, I love that he says, hey, because you're doing this, I'm giving this gift back to you. So don't share what I'm giving you with somebody else. It's for you. And I think that is both a, a wonderful blessing of the Lord, but it also comes with that responsibility, that reminder. This is something that someone has brought as an act of worship to me. So don't treat it common. Treat it as special. And I'll tell you as a pastor, I every time that you know I have an opportunity to to be you know compensated to be a, a pastor, I look at that as a wonderful blessing. And as a as a church, you know, we have we have trustees in our church who you know we, we look over the finances and we have a budget and we try to stay you know under budget if we possibly can because we don't just look at that as money. We look at that as someone who has offered that sacrifice as a gift to the Lord. And so therefore, every single penny is holy in our estimation. And so I think that principle still applies to us today. All right, verse 17 through 32. And the Lord said to Moses, give Aaron and his sons and all of the Israelites these instructions, which apply both to the native Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. If you present a gift as a burnt offering to the Lord, whether it is to fulfill a vow or as a voluntary offering, you will be accepted only if your offering is a male animal with no defects. It may be a bull, a ram, or a male goat. Do not present an animal with defects because the Lord will not accept it on your behalf. If you present a peace offering to the Lord from the herd or the flock, whether it is to fulfill a vow or it is a voluntary offering, you must offer a perfect animal. It may not, it may not have, you know, it may have no defect of any kind. You must not offer an animal that is blind, crippled, or injured, or uh, has a wart, or a skin sore, or scabs. Such animals must not be offered on the altar as a special gift to the Lord. If the bull or lamb has a leg that is too short, too long or too short, it may be offered as a voluntary offering, but it may not off be offered to fulfill a vow. If an animal has damaged testicles or is castrated, you may not offer it to the Lord. You must never do this uh, in your own land. Uh, and you must not accept such an animal from foreigners and then offer it as a sacrifice to your God. Such animals will not be accepted on your behalf, for they are mutilated or defective. And the Lord said to Moses, When a calf or a lamb or a goat is born, it must be left with its mother for seven days. From the eighth day on, it will be an acceptable, acceptable as a special gift to the Lord. You must not slaughter a mother animal and her offspring on the same day, whether from a herd or the flock. And when you bring a thanksgiving offering to the Lord, sacrifice it properly so you will be accepted. Eat the entire sacrificial animal on the day it is presented. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. I am the Lord. You must faithfully keep all my commands by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord. Do not bring shame on my holy name, for I will display, display my holiness among the people of Israel. I am the Lord who makes you holy, and it was I who rescued you from the land of Egypt that I might be your God. I am the Lord. So there's a lot here to digest, and I've said a lot about the idea of vocational ministry and honoring the house of the Lord and the people that are in the house of the Lord. I'm going to leave you with one other thought really quickly before we end our time together, and that is, did you notice this, that little thing at the end where God says, hey, when you are going to 
sacrifice an animal, make sure it's this kind of animal. Make sure it's an animal that's not already suffering in some kind of way with an injury or, or whatever. And then, hey, if you're going to sacrifice an animal, let it be this old. And don't kill its mom on the same day. You know, there's a lot in here that talks about slaughtering animals and things. But you also notice the different things that God says about animals to give them a certain level of, of creation dignity. Now, I'm not saying in any way that he gives them the same dignity he gives uh, humans. But there is a certain thing. Of he doesn't, he's not throwing them away. But rather, there is a certain dignity he gives to these animals to say, you can sacrifice this animal in your place because they are valuable. And I love that, that God gives dignity to all creation, not just his special creation, uh, mankind. And I think that is just a beautiful extra little thing here that we realize that, that God treasures all of his creation. And I just love that idea about God, that nothing is thrown away when it comes to the Lord. All right, I've said a lot today. I feel like the overall principle to me is that God has given you everything. Be sure to honor him in return. I want to know from you in the comments below what kind of stuck out to you in chapter 22. I'll see you next time for chapter 23.